Hi everyone, I'm here with Marissa Meyer. I, I, I could, actually, I guess I should introduce myself first. Wow. I'm Zoe from the channel Zoe's All Booked and I'm here with Marissa Meyer, the author of Heartless, the Renegades trilogy, uh, the Lunar Chronicles and her newest release, Instant Karma, which is coming out on November 3rd. Thank you so much for being here, Marissa. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started? Oh my gosh, sure. Well, hello, Zoe. It's so nice to meet you. I'm so excited to be here and so excited to talk about my new book. Yeah. Um, a little about me. Oh boy. Um, so I have been a writer pretty much my whole life. This was my dream since I was a little girl. Um, I always had a really overactive imagination. And since I was a little kid, I just started coming up with stories. And at some point, learned like that that's an actual job you can do and people will pay you to make stuff up um and as soon as i knew that i was like that is the job for me uh and so this is really a, a lifelong dream come true for me um and i'm a mom of two beautiful twin five-year-old girls um their birthday is in a couple weeks so i won't be able to say that for much longer oh my gosh i can't believe they're gonna be six Crazy. wow yeah anyways those are probably like the top two writer mom <laughs> that's fair When's their birthday? <laughs> I'm sorry? What what day is their birthday? November 1st, day after Halloween. Oh, mine's the October 21st. I thought we'd have birthday twins here. More oh, twins so than all <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so before I get started with the questions here, um, one of my best friends has a question for you that she will kill me if I do not ask. She okay. is the number one Renegades fan. I don't know anybody who loves Renegades more than she does. And she wants to know if you're planning on writing any more enemies to lovers with hidden identity type tropes. Oh, um, just in general. Uh, let me <laughs> think, going through my long list of ideas that I am kind of working on. I have a couple enemies to lovers ideas. Okay. I don't think I'm working on any more secret identity stories currently. Um, okay. But but I love, like, I grew up on Sailor Moon and wrote a ton of Sailor Moon fan fiction. Love so that. the whole secret identities trope is big for me. So okay. maybe, maybe someday. All right. And do you have any recommendations for that trope that you've read? Any comp titles that Ooh. you were working with or any new ones that you've read? Um, gosh, no, I mean, yeah, Sailor Moon was kind of the, the number one for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know that there have been others. Uh, yeah, I would, I would need time to think about it. <laughs> All right. If you think about it, tweet it, put it on Instagram, something. Okay. Yes. My I top <laughs> secret identity recommendations. Yeah. Okay. So I have my list of questions here. I had to write them down because mom brain. I'm sure you understand. I would totally have get it. Yeah. Totally and not. quarantine brain, all the brains. Yes. yes. General ADHD on top of it too. So <laughs> I don't remember anything. Okay. So starting off, um, Instant Karma is your first contemporary. Like it's a rom-com. How did it feel writing a rom-com versus how it felt writing your typical retellings or your enemies to lovers type um superhero novel was it any different yeah no it was really different um i mean my overall process kind of stayed the same as far as you know brainstorming outline draft revise blah 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 um but i really kind of felt like instant karma was a bit of a palate cleanser book for me uh, okay. of course i've loved and enjoyed writing all of my books but the Renegades trilogy, is, as much as I love that series, it really took a lot out of me. Okay. And like, if you read those three books, they are just like one long fight scene. And there are so many battles and like these, you know, epic stakes and superpowers and just like fight after fight. Mm -hmm. And I just really wanted something that was going to be a little quieter, uh, a little sweeter, just a love story, you know, that takes place in this cute little coastal town. Mm -hmm. um, and Instant Karma kind of fit that bill. And so it was, of course, it had its own challenges. Every book does. But yeah. it really, it was a super fun book to write. And I feel like it was exactly what I needed creatively when I wrote it. Okay. 
Um, and going off of that, which genre do you like writing in best? Hi, I don't know that I have a favorite. No. Um, you know, you're inspired for different things at different times. And mm -hmm. I've now, you know, done fantasy and sci-fi and contemporary and superheroes, whatever that falls into, <laughs> um, and graphic novels. And, you know, every one of them, there was something about it at that time in my life that was calling to me. Um, and so I don't know that it, that I really have one that's like, oh, I wish I could just write this all the time. Like I really mm -hmm. feel like I kind of need to to explore and and you know move into different spaces when I feel like okay, this is where I need to be right now. And yeah. um, I've been really lucky that my publisher and my readers so far have been willing to follow me into these new spaces, yeah. which has been great. Yeah, I honestly I think we'll follow you wherever you go. Um, yeah. Is ever writing like a thriller or something? Or is I that? Have. Yeah. yeah. No, oh. I actually do have ideas. Um, I have an idea for a murder mystery and I have a couple of ideas for horror novels. Okay. Um, nothing I'm actively working on right now, but they're, they're there in the back of the head. So okay. maybe someday. I mean, I am personally a scaredy cat and I hate horror. Me too. But I will follow you <laughs> horror. Oh, okay. So that will be. That'll be interesting to see somebody who's afraid of horror writing horror. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I can't say that I would be particularly good at it. I don't know. Um, but there is, there's a story, and sometimes you have an idea for a story that, you know, we don't pick and choose, or at least I don't. You just an idea yeah. pops into your head, and you're like, oh, that would make a great book. Um, and so then you gotta, you gotta take it where it goes. Yeah, you have to do it, or else it'll just be up there. And it'll bother yeah, you no. more. You have to get it out. I know they won't leave you alone. It's a the horrible voices. thing about being a writer. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Okay, so which character that you've written so far is the most like you and the least like you? Yeah. So for pretty much my career to date, whenever I was asked who was the most like me, I've always said Cress from the Lunar Chronicles. Okay. Um, but now I is 100% Prudence um, okay. from Instant Karma, which is weird because they are very different characters. <laughs> um, but I feel like in some ways, Cress is like the the best parts of Teen Marissa, and Prudence is like the worst parts of Teen Marissa. <laughs> Um, okay. And I, yeah, Prudence is, I mean, there's great things about her too. She's very ambitious, very smart, very driven. Mm -hmm. um, but she also like, she can be super judgy and like she has expectations. And if someone doesn't meet those expectations, she is so quick to write them off and like, well, mm -hmm. you know, you can't do anything for me. I, I don't have time for you. Um, and I'm so embarrassed to say that that was so me when I was growing up. Uh, yeah. And I really feel like Prudence's arc in the book very much mimics like some growing up periods that I went through. And when you have those realizations yeah. as you get a little bit wiser that you're like, no, like it's okay for people to think differently than you. It's okay for like, if, yeah. if someone doesn't hold the same values, it doesn't make them a bad person, you know? So there's yeah. a, a lot of overlap. Okay. Yeah. Cause like you can't be a perfect person as a teenager and reading <laughs> instant karma i was like i can see how a lot of teenagers would resonate with this and hopefully teens that pick up the book are like oh shit maybe i'm yes. like that and that will you know springboard them does that even, i don't even know if that's a word into personal growth and then better people will come from reading <laughs> instant karma. perhaps perhaps i mean i definitely i never write like with an intention of like here is this message that I'm yeah. trying to impart to the readers and learn from me um you know but but you do find that these like themes just kind of grow naturally mm -hmm. out of telling a story um so yeah I mean who knows maybe we'll have some some life awakenings <laughs> yeah you never know <laughs> Just push mm -hmm. towards somebody who might need it <laughs> just yeah right <laughs> 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 So because you say you're most like Prudence now, are you afraid of the water? Because that came up a little bit. She just didn't want to have anything to do with it. Even living in a coastal town, just didn't really vibe with the water. 
That's a great question. No, I, I'm a Pisces. So I was, you know, like a little fish growing up my whole life. Um, so I'm not afraid of the water. Um, however, my husband, whose favorite movie is Jaws, is terrified, like of the actual ocean. Like he'll go in lakes and stuff, but he is Make totally freaked out to swim in the ocean. So it's like, I can, I can kind of get it. <laughs> Your husband is not alone. I am afraid of the water too. <laughs> so I know. a lot of people know in that movie, really, I did a number on people. <laughs> yeah. You see it too young and whoops, there goes your whole life not going in the water at all. Never again, never again. Just write that off. <laughs> yeah. So that's where all the Jaws references come from then, from your husband's love of the movie. Very much so. Yeah, I had, like, I'd seen the movie, but a long time ago and it didn't really leave much of an impression on me. Um, and then, yeah, my husband is a huge fan. And one of my daughters, since she was about two or so, just became obsessed with sharks. Mm -hmm. And so when she was, I don't know, maybe four-ish, um, she finally convinced my husband to let her watch Jaws. And it became her favorite <laughs> movie. And we've now all seen it a billion times. Wow. And it was right around the same time that I was writing Instant Karma. So it really just like played <laughs> right into the whole like exactly. sea life marine theme. Yeah. <laughs> well, your daughter is braver than I am. Props to her. I, I love that for her. It's so nuts to me. Like she doesn't get scared and she is totally rooting for the shark in that movie. Like she really? is on the side of the shark. Yeah. What? So Whatever that means. Up, is she going to grow up to be a marine biologist, maybe? She actually says that that is her plan, to be a marine biologist. I love that. We'll see. Yeah. So knowing what you want early in life seems to run in your family. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. But she, like, yeah. she's so brave. She'll pick up spiders. She'll pick up lizards, snakes. Oh. It's, yeah, bumblebees. Like, I'm 35 years old and still scared of these things. That's fair. That's yep. totally fair. <laughs> Thank you. <Okay. laughs> um, do you have any advice for writers? And does that change across the different genres now that you've mm. dipped your toes into multiple? Gosh, that is a really good question. Um, and I do think the different genres, you know, there's there's different considerations, different things you have to think about. Um, mm -hmm. If you're writing fantasy or, you know, doing a lot of world building or focusing more on character. Um, but just as like a general advice to aspiring writers, um, you know, I think it's really important to be kind to yourself um, and to be patient with yourself, which is like one of those things where I wish like someone would have told me uh, and I, that I would have listened, which I probably wouldn't have listened, but whatever. Um, but like I, I had this dream and I wanted to be a writer so bad and all through my teen years, you know, I was working on novels and had this dream of being published. And then when it didn't happen by the time I was, you know, 18, then 20, then 22, I felt like such a failure. And I thought, gosh, I'm, I'm working so hard and I just can't get these books right. And maybe I'm not meant for this. And, you know, I was just so hard on myself at the time. Um, which now just seems ridiculous. And I'm like, you were so young. You had your whole life ahead of you still. Um, what was the rush? But but I just had it in my mind that until I accomplished this dream, um, that there, there was just nothing else there for me. And I wish that I would have kind of relaxed a little bit and kind of enjoyed the journey and enjoyed exploring the stories and that that before time when you're still aspiring it has there's a lot of great things about that time um so yeah i wish i would just say to aspiring writers you know take your time be patient work hard and don't give up but also recognize that it is a journey so try to enjoy every step yeah excuse me while i write this down <laughs> Honestly, i think one of the few positives that has come out of Twitter recently is all the threads from published authors who are like, I'm this old and I just published my first book. And it's like, it's it's good to have the reminder that you're not a failure if you're 18 and you haven't published three books already. Absolutely. Happens. Yeah, like, gosh, I'm never on Twitter. So I didn't know about those threads. But that's a great yeah. thing for young people for writers, really writers of all ages to know. Mm -hmm. um, and I know writers who, you know, published and successful, who didn't get their first book published till they were in their 40s, you know, yeah. so it's all it's different for everybody. Yeah. 
Okay, so going off of what you were saying about what you wanted to say to your younger self, it, first of all, that really does seem like prudence. I see that a lot there. The <laughs> yes, I, I chill out prudence. <laughs> um, do you have a piece of advice for any character that you've written? If you could say <laughs> something to one character at the beginning of their journey, when before everything blows up for them, do you have one thing that you could go back and tell them to relax about? <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Um, I mean, I think the, probably the two that need the most guidance are Prudence and Nova from Renegades. Um, <laughs> Nova, I mean, through no fault of her own, she had such a terrible upbringing, terrible childhood, horrible traumatic events. So, like, we have sympathy. And we understand where she's coming from. Yeah. Um, but there's so many times in writing that series where I just wanted to take her by the hand and say, Nova, like, yeah. let's let's stop and think about what it is that we're doing and what are we really trying to accomplish yeah. right now? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so going off of that, you can always go back as you're writing and with, especially with a series and have your characters learn things. But with a series that you didn't write, like one of your favorite series, is there a piece of advice you could give to another character oh. that you had no part in creating <laughs> and you can them by the shoulders and tell them to just buck up their ideas and get it together. Yeah, gosh. Um, so two books that I have absolutely loved this year um, are by Roshni Chokshi, The Gilded Wolves and The Silvered Serpents, which just, mm -hmm. just came out recently. Um, and they're excellent kind of fantasy historical ensemble cast. They're so good. I love these books. Uh, but there is one character, Severin, who's kind of like the main character, and he just gives himself such a tough time. He takes everything to heart. He just never gives himself a break uh, and really ends up doing a lot of damage to himself in his friend circle. And so he's someone that I just want to be like, again, kind of like with Nova, like, really, let's reconsider what <laughs> what is going on in your yeah. head. Is it the truth or is it also just what you're making up? And just I have hopes yourself, for him in book three. Please. Hopes for him in book three. <laughs> yep. I haven't read The Silvered Serpents yet, but I am so excited. And those covers are just so gorgeous. They're so pretty. Oh, my cat's yelling at me. Okay. <laughs> I thought maybe it was a child. <laughs> no. <laughs> baby sleeping upstairs. Cat's yelling at me. <laughs> um, okay. Another prudence question, because I was just reading it, so it's most fresh in my mind. Have you ever seen Modern Family? The TV show. Like an episode, maybe two, but not, not really. <laughs> so then the answer to this question is obviously no, but I'm going to need you to watch that show and watch Alex in particular and just think of Prudence as you're watching Alex because the parallels I was drawing, oh, like okay. same kind of overachiever, everybody says, do you even know how to have fun? She's like, oh, I can have fun. I know yeah. how to have fun. And then yeah. just the character arc through the show was reminding me of Prudence through the book. So, so I think you'll get a kick out of that. Yeah, yeah, no, and that is, that's one of those shows that gets recommended to me all the time. And yeah, yeah, you just, who has time for TV? <laughs> exactly. I feel that. That's one of those things where it's like, do I stop reading? Or stop writing? <laughs> or stop writing? It's a hard to make. Yeah. And I feel like, like by the time a show or a series has like really picked up steam to where like everyone's talking about and oh you have to watch this yeah then that's like a commitment like well I'm not gonna catch up on 30 episodes yeah <laughs> there's I think I think we're on season seven right now so there's a <laughs> lot it's going to be a commitment but it's okay. worth it. it's Good to worth know. It. <laughs> okay going off on another random question I totally lost my, my place in here. All right, here's one. Somebody asked me this, and now I find it my personal duty to ask everybody that I talk to, if you could be one kind of dinosaur, which one would it be and why? <laughs> hmm. Look, I mean, I'd have to go pterodactyl because flying. Okay. That, you know what? That's valid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah 
My answer always is whatever the one with the long neck is. The bron I, I, bronchosaurus? Something like that. Yeah, you know that one crossed my mind because I do like those yeah. ones. Yeah. Giraffes are my favorite animal. So I have to go okay. with that. Sure. That closest, you know? Yeah, they had, we were at um, the, like the dinosaur paleontology museum in Salt Lake City a few years ago and they have the skeleton of one of those. Um, okay. And it's like standing out where you can actually like walk under it. It's so cool. Oh, wow. They're that so big. <laughs> interesting, but terrifying. <laughs> like, yeah, it's... no, a little terrifying, but yeah, dinosaurs yeah. are awesome. They really are. Would you ever write a book with dinosaurs in it? <laughs> never say never? That seems a little outside my wheelhouse. <laughs> no. If you could write a war. You might be able to write a book with dinosaurs. You never it's know. It's true. It's true. You, you never, never know. know. Um, are you a big Beatles fan? So big. Love. I figure, <laughs> based yeah. off of the family names, I figure. <laughs> yes. Are you, no. Are you a big actually, music fan in general? I'm sorry. Are you a big music fan in general? Yeah, I mean, I like music, um, but who doesn't like music? Uh, so I'm not, sh I wouldn't say that I'm like big into music. I'm not super knowledgeable. Um, I didn't grow up playing any instruments, although I did pick up the ukulele here a few years ago. So that's been one okay. of my pet side hobbies. Um, but yeah, but my, my dad just loved listening to music. And that was one of the things that I remember about growing up is it, there was just always music playing in our house, and okay. uh, and always whenever I got home from school or on the weekends, there was just always music playing. And you know, often the Beatles. He was really into classic rock, um, and so yeah, it just kind of infiltrated my whole childhood. Okay, and the reason I ask is because one of the characters in Instant Karma is so into music and mm -hmm. she knows so much about it, and like Prudence. And when she started going on about it, I was like, I know you're using English words, but I don't know what you mean. <laughs> yes, there's actually, so that scene where Prudence is talking to Ari and Ari is just like totally nerding out about this John um, Elton song. Uh, and that was all, her words were pretty much from my ukulele teacher, um, okay. who's like a super music guy and like has a, I don't know, master's degree in music or something. Um, and so I took the song to him and it was like, I have a character who needs to gush about this. <laughs> what would she say? Um, and so, and then his like response was like way in depth and like paragraphs of content. And then I was like, okay, we need to edit it back. It's still a novel. Yeah. It still has to be yeah. real dialogue. <laughs> this isn't a thesis. It's a novel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, because I was wondering like if you had researched or if that was a hobby of your own, but that's really cool that it was firsthand knowledge that somebody else had that was close to you. That's yeah, really cool. Yeah, no, I still only vaguely understand what she's talking about in that show. <laughs> I think my, my favorite line there was, who's Daniel? Because I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's a great I know. Ooh. No, no, and it's funny because that song, like I, I cry listening to that song. I love that song, um, and it's so beautiful. But there was a time when I was listening to that song, and it made me choke up. And then I just realized, Marissa, you don't know who's Daniel. Why are you so sad about this? So the real question was that before or after you had your kids? Uh, that was after. That makes a lot more sense. Okay. Just, just <laughs> right all the time and the constant emotions, you just can't control it. It just happens sometimes. That's and then true, you have to that's true. You have to reel yourself back and be like, it's just a commercial. It's just a song. <laughs> Tone it down. It's just a Disney movie. You can get okay, through this. Was, <laughs> we just watched Moana again and it was <gasps> constant tears. Constant oh, tears. every time, every time. Mm -hmm. Moana and Coco. Oh, God. I haven't oh, watched Coco yet. Oh, because gosh. I don't want to cry that much. <laughs> that's, yeah. Oh, that's a perfect one for this time of year. It is. Yeah. It is. You oh. have to watch it. It's so good. I know. There's a kitty cat. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> yelling. <laughs> okay. 
So you've done a few retellings, which mm-hmm. personally I am a huge fan of. Retellings are one of my favorite subgenres. They have their own bookshelf. Oh, cool. <laughs> Heartless was one of my favorite retellings, one of my favorite books in general that I've ever read because the origin stories just really get me. I love them. And Wizard of Oz is my favorite fairy tale. Mm. Is there hope for a Wizard of Oz retelling or origin story or something? Oh, interesting. Um, Gosh, you know, it is not one that I've considered. I actually, Wizard of Oz was never one of my favorites growing up. Oh. Um, I actually, so are you familiar with the, the going back to the music thing, um, with the Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon album that you play uh, while you're watching The Wizard of Oz? No. Are you hip to this? You know what I'm talking about? So no. it's something that someone figured out like in the 60s or 70s, and I'm sure they were on something. Um, but if you play the Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon album while you're watching The Wizard of Oz, the lyrics like creepily line up with things that are happening in the movie. Um, okay. You check it out. Being a Wizard of Oz fan, you should definitely yeah. check it out. But I'd say probably the first four or five times I ever actually watched The Wizard of Oz was what with the Pink Floyd album. <laughs> so I, like, I had no idea what the actual movie was about or what was happening in it. That's um, fair. That is fair. Yeah. yeah, I assume you've read Daniel Page's series. Yes, I loved it. They're so good. Love her. Yeah. yeah. And Wicked is one of my favorite books too. So we do, we do. Like a Pink Floyd Wizard of Oz crossover novel. I'm here for that. <laughs> there you go. Now you know, we're talking. There's potential there. <laughs> yeah. uh, any Wizard of Oz content, any retelling content, I'm here for it. It just, it's what I need in my life. Well, thank you. I am, it's not Wizard of Oz, but I am working on another retelling. Are we allowed to know what it's about yet? I can't, okay. we haven't announced it yet. Um, I, I will be announcing what the fairy tale is at the Instant Karma online launch event. Okay. So. All right. <laughs> I will write that down. Okay, I'll see you I, there. I will be fangirling no matter what it is. <laughs> Especially with the Beauty and the Beast ones. Blink twice if it's Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, Beauty and the Beast is probably the one that I get the most requests for, I think. Yeah. There's a mm-hmm. lot of Beauty and the Beast retellings out there, and I've heard people saying that we're done with them, but I'm of the mind that we'll never be done with any sort of retelling. No, so. the fairy tales. They just are the gift that keeps on giving. Um, really I'm really good friends with Lish McBride and her book Curses comes out next year. Uh, and I'm reading it right now and it's so good. And it is a gender swapped Beauty and the Beast, which is oh. fantastic. So definitely keep your eye okay. on that one. Okay. Um, I did see somewhere that you said you wanted to do a Bluebeard retelling. Mm. In- is that like like an origin story type thing that you would want to do or it would be um if i ever get around to that one which we'll see (laughs) um it's an idea for like a contemporary like serial killer twist okay i mean obviously he is a serial killer but it would be like in a contemporary setting okay um we'll see i don't know (laughs) that's not the one i feel like you're trying to trick me (laughs) <laughs> you know what? A girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of Bluebeard retellings, have you ever read um what the hell is it called? Uh Strands of Bronze and Gold by Jane Nickerson. No, I haven't even heard of it, I don't think. That's a Bluebeard retelling. Okay. Set in I think the late 1800s in the southern one of the southern states. And okay. it's very creepy. But very good. I don't know well, where I, I came across this book, but it was fantastic. And is it YA? Yes. Okay. I'll, I love Bluebeard. It's one of my all-time favorites. So yeah. double, strands of, what was it? Strands of? Strands of bronze and gold. Bronze and gold. Actually, give me a hot second here. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that you knew exactly where it was. I can't find anything on my shelf. <laughs> I recently organized everything and did a bookshelf tour, so it's all fresh because that took a oh, long to do. <laughs> this is the cover. 
it's fantastic. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. It really is. So if you are in the mind for a retelling and you're looking for comps or anything, there you go. <laughs> Good to know. Okay. <laughs> so going off of this, what is one book, recent read or otherwise, that you recommend to everybody? When somebody says, mm. recommend me a book, this is the first one that you go for. Um. <laughs> <laughs> There's a ton of them. Uh, no, Robin Lefevers. Her, what is the name of it? Uh, Grave Mercy and the series okay. it followed are that trilogy is one of my favorite things that I have ever yeah. read. Um, and they're they're just so good. And I know they've been out for a while now, so I feel like you know if a book's been out for a while, then you know people just don't talk about it as much, and maybe new readers aren't aware of like the amazing things that came before. Um, so that's one that I, I just want people to go and enjoy because it is wonderful. It's rich and it's magical and it's super romantic and kind of dark and creepy at the same time. And it has all the things. I haven't read it, but I've heard of it. Okay. I will pick it check up. it out. Yeah, I'm trusting you. I will pick it up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Honestly, though, I am like props to you that you could actually think of a book off the top of your head like that. Because I know <laughs> the first of every reader and it's writer. So no, the temptation is truly to like turn around and be like, hold on, let me look at my shelves. I'll, I'll find one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's that's the problem is that there's so many that you love and yeah. so many that you want to talk about and recommend. And so, yeah, it's really hard picking just one. Yeah. And Typically, if it's some a non-reader asking, you can see their eyes just glazing over, and they're like, "I wanted um, one book, not I your know, book story. right." And if yeah, if they're not writing it down, then you know it's just going in one ear and out yeah. the other. They'll hear the first book and the last book, and then they'll yeah. forget even those within five minutes. Yeah, it's just rude, really. <laughs> right, I know. Hello, you asked. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. I have two more questions here, and then I have a bunch of rapid fire questions. Okay. Um, so where do they go? Oh, I'm such a hot mess. Oh, yeah, okay. So other than the Beatles names, because obviously we know where the Beatles names come, come from, how do you come up with names for any genre? Yeah, it varies. Um, sometimes a name just pops into your head and is really fitting and perfect for the character. Love it when that happens. <laughs> uh, sometimes I will go on baby naming websites to find names. Sometimes for last names, which tend to be really hard, like really difficult is coming up with last names for characters. Um, so what I've started doing is I'll go to IMDb and just pick like a random movie and scroll through like the entire credits mm -hmm. until I find some good last names. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, in, uh, instant karma, Ari, who her full name is Araceli Escalante. Mm -hmm. And she is actually named after someone I was at an airport and like went to get food. And the woman who was working the food stand had a name tag and her name was Araceli Escalante. And I thought that is the most beautiful name I have ever heard in my life. So I wrote it down and I was like, someday there will be a character that I can One use day. for this name. Somebody find that woman, send her a copy. <laughs> I, know, I, wish, I don't even know what city I was in, but. <laughs> One of the endless stopovers and you're just. Yes. <laughs> it's amazing that you even saw it. Because usually airports, you're like horse blinders. I'm not paying attention to anything. It was fate or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Well, with a name like that, I mean, gosh, that's a good name. <laughs> yeah. And the last question is another two-part question. So I've asked you which character you see yourself in the most. Um, what's, what was your favorite character? doesn't have to be one that you identify with the most your favorite character and your least favorite character that you've oh. ever written? <laughs> you know, I really, I don't know that I have favorites and least favorites. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, there's characters that are easier to write and more difficult to write. Um, in the Lunar Chronicles, Thorn was always really easy to write and Eco was really easy to write. So mm -hmm. I always got a kick whenever I was writing a scene with them in it. Mm -hmm. um, and they just brought a really fun liveliness to the dialogue, which was just super fun for me as the writer. Mm -hmm. um, but I get really attached to all of my characters. So I don't know that I really have a, yeah. a top favorite. Is it kind of like somebody asking you to pick your favorite child? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. I was all, like, just yeah. also like, how's my heart from Heartless? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't think I could pick or even my least favorite, like even yeah. the villains. Like I really love the villains too. So that's yeah. fair. I <laughs> spend a lot of time with them and it's like, even if I didn't really like you to begin with, it's just, We've right. been through so much together. I know. I just love to hate you. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Okay. So we have a few minutes left here. Rapid fire questions. One answer. Don't think about it. Okay. Clear my mind. <laughs> Sweet or salty? Sweet. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Summer or winter? Winter. Spring or fall? Fall. Fall or winter? Fall. Good choice. Books <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Books or movies? Books. Books or TV shows? Books. TV shows or movies? Movies. Okay. Can we add documentaries or... to that list? Because really documentaries. Yeah. I'm a nerd. That... <laughs> I would say comedy or horror, but we can obviously, based off of previous data, guess oh, comedy. <laughs> yeah. And like rom-com all the way. Same. Yeah. Same. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Nasty, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go out or stay home? Stay home. Purple or green? Purple. Pasta or rice? Pasta. Pasta or mashed potatoes? Pasta. Okay. Fantasy <laughs> or mashed potatoes, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit offended on behalf really? of Matthew. I don't like mashed potatoes. That's not true. I mean, they they have their place, but yeah. That's fair. But pasta <laughs> is superior to everything. I get it. Yeah. I feel that. Fantasy <laughs> or contemporary? Uh, contemporary. Okay. And I, I say that because I'm always in the mood for contemporary, but I have to really be in the mood for fantasy. That's fair. I understand. I understand. But I love them both. Same. Same. Um, I, I'm out of the rapid fire questions, so I'm just going to come up with them on the spot. Just a few okay. more. Okay. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> urban fantasy or second world fantasy? What's second world fantasy? <laughs> high fantasy. Like set in a oh, different Oh, oh, um, yeah. So high fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Series or standalones? Standalones. For reading or writing? I'd say both, um, but <laughs> not every story fits into a standalone. If I could just write standalones, then I would love that because yeah. they just, you tie them up in a nice bow and then you move on to some new fun thing. Uh, but my brain too often is like, no, complicate things. Let's make it bigger. I understand. Um, plotting or pantsing or planting. Plotting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One more. Cause we are almost out of time here. Um, Draco, do you have a question? No, he's <laughs> asleep. He doesn't. Uh, long chapters or short chapters? Short chapters. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that is actually all the time that we have. Thank you so much for joining me. Like I told you before, this is my first author interview. That's and I so think it's so really well. This was amazing. <laughs> you did great. Thank you. Um, so yeah, everybody that's watching, Instant Karma again comes out November 3rd. It's a Tuesday. Write it down. Um, <laughs> thank you all for tuning in. If you have any questions, drop them down below and we'll see if um, we can send them to you on Twitter or something or Instagram. Because you said you're not on Twitter much. Yeah, Twitter. Yeah. You can yeah. try. But... <laughs> yeah. That's a very toxic place that drains yeah. your soul. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. Thank you so much. I was so excited to read the book and talk to you. I loved the book. It was so cute and so refreshing. Oh, and thank, thank you. Thank you. I know in this year, I feel like yeah. oh, what's the thing that's a little happy and lighthearted might be yeah. just what the doctor <laughs> ordered. <laughs> All right. I cannot wait for everybody to, to read the book. And I am so excited to hear about what you have coming next for us. Thank you. Thanks so much, Zoe. This was so much fun. Yeah, thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs>